Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. Um, today we're going to be doing another cube archetype rundown, and today we're going to be looking at Reanimator. So as with all these types of videos, these are only my opinions, and this is by no means intended to be the end-all be-all guide to Reanimator, but simply a tool more geared towards newer players to use as a foundation to build off of. So Reanimator as an archetype in cube is very straightforward, and in my opinion one of the easier decks to build and pilot when you're first starting out drafting. The main goal of the deck is to cheat beefy creatures into play by first getting them into the graveyard and then casting reanimation spells on them to put them directly into play, way faster than you'd usually be able to cast them. One thing I do really like about this deck is you're not inherently locked into any specific colors aside from black. However, I've personally found being in Demir colors or Sultai is the most effective and the most fun build to me personally, although playing red also gives you access to a lot of really great like looting style effects. And you can even build around like a sneak and reanimate style deck if you wanted to, and those are super, super viable as well. So really we're only dependent on three things to make this deck actually function. And those are going to be the reanimation spells themselves, obviously, creatures to reanimate, and then ways to get those creatures into the graveyard to reanimate early on. I really like reanimator in cube drafts because a lot of the pieces can go really late. So it's really easy to kind of backdoor into, um, lead into a draft if your first plan isn't really working out. And in most cubes, there's multiple redundant cards, so it's not a situation where like somebody drafts Splinter Twin and then another player gets the Deceiver X Arcs, um, and it's just really hard for either player to have like a functional Splinter Twin deck. That doesn't really happen a whole lot. So moving on to the actual cards we want to look for, some of your high priority reanimating targets are going to be like high CMC, high impact creatures that would normally be very hard to cast. So naturally, there's going to be a lot of variance on the actual cards just from cube to cube because creature selection is going to be pretty different depending if you're building, you know, a powered cube versus modern versus popper. Um, but here's some of the more, I would say, common options you're going to run into. So I think one creature in general is pretty widely considered to be the very best reanimation target. And that, of course, is going to be Grizzlebrand. Grizzlebrand's a 7-7 flying lifelinker um, with the ability to pay 7 life and draw 7 cards. Um, getting this out early is just backbreaking, and honestly, if your opponent doesn't have an answer to it, you're just going to win. Um, another really strong answer that kind of depends on the matchup is Iona, Shield of Ameria. Um, Iona's a 7-7 flyer as well, and when it enters the battlefield, you choose a color, and your opponents just can't cast spells of the chosen color. So really against any like monocolored deck, this is just backbreaking. They can't cast spells anymore and you just kind of win on the spot. Even against a lot of like two and three color decks, being able to shut off an entire color is really strong and having a 7-7 with evasion is oftentimes just enough to win the game. Sometimes though, you'll be in a weird matchup against like a four or five color deck, in which case they have a lot of like multicolored removal and ways to deal with things. This isn't really the best option there, which is why I definitely recommend having at least a few different reanimation targets in your deck. Um, it's definitely not something you want to draft every single one in the cube because you end up just drawing them instead of your reanimation spells and other stuff. But it's definitely good, like in situations where you pick up an early Iona, to have something else in that weird corner case where it doesn't really do much. So moving on to another really situational card, um, Elish Norn Grand Cenobite is a 4-7 with Vigilance that gives creatures you control plus two plus two and creatures your opponents control minus two minus two. So against mono red, white weenie, any kind of deck where your opponent's gonna have a lot of creatures, it's really good and it just kind of stops them from having any kind of board presence. But again, in a matchup like Storm, 4-7, uh, not really gonna get you there too fast. So it's definitely better against like a more mid-range or aggressive matchup. So the next card I wanna look at is Consecrated Sphinx. Um, Consecrated Sphinx is a 4-6 flyer with the ability when your opponent draws a card, you draw two cards, um, which again, you just kind of bury your opponent in card advantage at that point. And on top of that, it is only a six drop, so worst case scenario, if you have it in your hand and you just can't get it into the graveyard, um, casting it is not too impractical. Although if you do manage to reanimate this early and it goes unanswered, again, you're just going to win through card advantage. So another big one in most cubes is going to be Inkwell Leviathan. Um, Inkwell Leviathan is a 7-11 with Trample, Island Walk, and Shroud, so it makes it really hard to deal with once you land it. And it's an artifact creature, so you can tinker it out as well if you end up going that route. Um, although it's, it's one of those weird ones where 
it doesn't really do much for you other than just beat face, so it can get outclassed in the right matchup without having any kind of like like Grizzle Brand where you just draw seven cards. Um, so it's not like my highest pick, but it's still very good. And the last one I want to take a look at, um, I'm pretty sure this is still in the Magic Online cube. I, I feel like it should be in most cubes, it's just a really good creature. It's going to be Grave Titan. Grave Titan's a 6-6 with Death Touch, and when it enters the battlefield or attacks, you put two 2-2 uh, two, two black zombie creatures onto the battlefield. So with this, you get it out early, um, you beat in for six, you get an army of 2-2s two very quickly. So really, unless your opponent has like a board wipe or a way to answer this before you generate too many zombies, um, you're just gonna win. And one thing I do wanna touch on just really briefly, are gonna be creatures that when they hit the graveyard, they actually shuffle themselves back into your deck. You wanna be really careful about accidentally picking those early on because I did that a few times really early on drafting. And it feels really bad when you think you're gonna reanimate an Eldrazi and it just shuffles everything through. Although technically they can be reanimated at instant speed with those triggers on the stack. Using cards like a Corpse Dance, Goryeo's Vengeance, or Shallow Grave, I wouldn't usually consider them to be super high picks for a reanimator deck as you're drafting. With that being said, sometimes you just want to make Zombie Emrakul and that's really fun too. So moving on to spells that we're going to be casting to actually get these creatures into play from the graveyard. And there's a ton of different options here as well. Um, but some of the more ubiquitous ones are going to be cards like Reanimate, obviously being kind of the namesake of the deck. Um, Reanimate is a sorcery for one black mana that puts target creature from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Then you lose life equal to its converted mana cost. Um, so super cheap, super efficient, get stuff out really early. And as long as everything is going as it should, the life loss is really negligible almost all the time. So moving on, um, another really common one we're going to run into is Exhum, which is a two mana sorcery and each player puts a creature card from their graveyard onto the battlefield, which might not sound very good because your opponent gets stuff back as well. Um, although usually you're going to be casting this card ideally before your opponent really has much in the graveyard. And if they do, if you're not in a mirror match, what they bring out is almost never going to match, you know, a Grizzlebrand, Iona, Elish Norn, anything like that regardless. Um, so as long as you're coming out ahead, the card is really good. And the next one is going to be Animate Dead, which is a two mana enchantment. Um, this one's a wall of text, which basically just reads um, return a card from your graveyard to play with this attached to it. Uh, the creature gets minus one, minus zero, which again, not a huge deal. Most of these guys are pretty big anyway. Um, the only downside with Animate Dead is if your opponent destroys the enchantment, you lose the creature as well. So this one's still really good. Not, you know, reanimate good, but it's still really good. And Shallow Grave um, is one of the instant ones, which is really cool because you can reanimate um, things like Blightsteel Colossus, Eldrazi, Progenitus, that kind of thing. Um, two mana instant, it puts the top creature card from your graveyard into play, um, and it gains haste, but you only get it for the turn. That's the only downside with this one. So this is really good with like Emrakul where you can just do that attack and kind of one shot your opponent. And the last card I do want to talk about is Unburial Rites. I'm not a huge fan of this card. I know it's pretty polarizing. A lot of people love it. Um, it's five mana sorcery return target creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. And it actually has flashback for three and a white. So you can recast this again, which is really cool. Um, it's just a little slow for me. So moving on, uh, the third like key element to the deck that I do want to cover is going to be just ways to get creatures into the graveyard fast. Generally, this is either going to be done uh, by searching your library directly and putting them into the graveyard that way, or by forcing yourself to discard them once you've managed to get them in your hand. Um, personally, I really like building reanimator decks in a way to benefit as much from discarding as possible, and like symmetrical discard effects are perfect for that. So one of my favorite ways to go about this is Liliana the Veil. Vale. Honestly, she does everything. She's probably one of the best Planeswalkers ever made. She can have each player discard a card. You can make your opponent sacrifice a creature. Um, her ultimate, if you can get that off, is really powerful as well. Looter Ilkor, another great option if you're in blue. It's a two mana one one with shadow, which basically means it's unblockable in cube. Um, when it deals damage to an opponent, draw a card, then discard a card. So you can kind of cycle through your deck a little bit faster, get the things you want into the graveyard, get things in your hand you want in your hand. 
Um, all around just a great card. Frantic Search is another good option in blue. Uh, three mana instant, draw two cards, then discard two cards, and then you untap up to three lands, basically making this free. And Faithless Looting is a perfect option, especially if you're in red already. Um, it's one mana sorcery, draw two cards, then discard two cards, and it has flashback for three as well. Um, so really you're getting a two for one with this one. And one of my personal favorites recently has been Rotting Registar. It's a three mana seven six, which on its own is very impressive. And the effect, which is usually a downside, is actually great for us, which just says at the beginning of your upkeep, discard a card. So we're already pressuring our opponent with a 7-6 while we're setting up to reanimate something big, which is just really great. Um, another great option for reanimator specifically, um, other than that, this card is not very good, is Putrid Imp. It's a 1-mana one 1-1. One, one. You can discard a card to give it flying. On its own, not very impressive, but it is a great discard outlet. And especially in Vintage Cube, um, what I would probably consider to be the best card in the deck, um, is going to be Bizarre Baghdad, which is a land that taps and allows you to draw two cards, then discard three cards. Um, really early on, this is kind of like my signpost card to get into Reanimator. Um, if I have this and like a large creature already, um, that usually indicates that it's pretty open. And our other option is going to be to put things directly from our deck into the graveyard. The most efficient way to do that is going to be in Tomb. It's instant speed, it's one black mana. Search your library for a card, put that card in the graveyard. Doesn't get much more cut and dry. Um, and Tomb's a great option for any reanimator deck. Another good one in most cubes is going to be Buried Alive. It's a three mana sorcery, and you search your library for three creatures and put them into your graveyard. Um, so pretty much the same thing. Costs three times as much, does three times as much. This is a really good one if you're playing with uh, Living Death. So you can just instantly reanimate all three creatures at once. And another one that I don't really see too often, but I think could be really fun and more of like a mid-range kind of reanimation strategy is Gerard's Orders, which is a four mana sorcery in black and green. Um, search your library for up to two creature cards and put one into your hand and the other into your graveyard. I like this a whole lot. If I had like a modern power level cube, I might try this out in it but I think it's probably a little too slow for like legacy or vintage. So one really fun thing that black green reanimator decks can do is build more of like a value mid range kind of deck based around the synergy of survival of the fittest and recurring nightmare, where you consistently dump creatures from your hand into the graveyard while simultaneously filling your hand with more creatures with survival of the fittest, and then consistently reanimate the discarded creatures with recurring nightmare as long as you have a creature in play to sacrifice, which really should not be a problem once you get everything going. So while a lot of people don't really think of Reanimator being like a combo deck in the same way that you play Kiki Jiki, Deceiver x and you just kind of win the game on the spot if you have both out, um, it is still a strategy that relies on a few specific pieces to come together to function. Um, so cards like Vampiric Tutor, Demonic Tutor, Mystical Tutor, or even Imperial Seal to kind of find those pieces early on are going to be really helpful in sneaking out something before your opponent can actually get an answer together. Similarly, if you're in blue, um, cantrips are a great way to dig through your deck and find what you need when you need it. So cards like Ponder, Preordain, Brainstorm, and Impulse are all really similar there. It also really never hurts to have like permission or counter magic as a backup in case your opponent does have an answer to what we're trying to do. Or if we have to go on the defensive for a little bit and play a reactive game until we can get our stuff together. Um, obviously, cards like Mana Drain, Counter Spell, Force of Will if you're heavy blue. Um, the typical good counter spells are going to be really good in this deck. So ultimately, building and playing a successful reanimator deck relies on a bit more to come together than a deck like Mono Red. But when built well, they can be incredibly consistent and can absolutely 3-0 and put up great results. So if you're new to drafting, the first time you try to play this deck, it might not go completely smoothly, and that's totally okay. Um, with anything, the more you do it, the better you'll get. Aside from just like putting in time and getting more familiar with the archetype, um, one thing that does really help is watching other like drafters stream. Um, in my opinion, that is the easiest way to pick up on little things like you might have missed the first time. Um, especially like Caleb Gannon, he's 
incredible to watch. He narrates incredibly well. So I would definitely recommend watching people like that just to pick up on little things here and there. But that is all I have to say about Reanimator. Um, if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing, liking, leaving a comment. Let me know if you have anything else to add to this, if there's anything I could have done better, anything you want to see in the future. Um, yeah, thanks so much.